Though my flesh and my heart should waste away, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful. But it is good to be, for me to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge. Thank you all for joining me once again on a digital Sunday. Our next outdoor worship is next Sunday, the 9th at 10 a.m. in the parking lot. Continue to bring your own chair and mask and distance and all those things we're all getting so used to doing. And I, I want to still commend anyone who just continues to worship online through these videos uh, and in your own way. Uh, I admire your, your willingness to remain inside and your uh, interest in safety. It is, it is something that we can all continue to learn from that we really are still safer at home, although our outdoor worship has been a true blessing. You can also continue to join us on Sunday nights at 6.30 p.m. at the link below our Google Meet. We are studying the Psalms and the Gospels, and that's a great time as well. Would you take a moment, pause the video if you have to, and center yourself? Listen to the silence. Prepare your heart to, for God to, to uh, pour out spirit upon all of us today in worship. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, you have given your only son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture for this Sunday is what I was preparing to preach last Sunday until we switched it up and had Matt preach. It is from Matthew chapter 13, and is a series of parables and sayings about the parables. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood this, they, he asked? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To some of you, uh, it might seem like a little bit of deja vu to hear me preaching from this text because it was spoken to me as I was meditating upon the life of Ruth Haney and preparing to um, celebrate her life and her death, uh, remember her death and, and mourn with her family. Got a little tongue tied there. As we were preparing for Ruth's funeral, this text came to my mind and, and I preached on it as we remembered her that day because I was inspired by the way she planted seeds. And by the way, that when you consider the crafts, the leadership, the service 
of, of the life of Ruth Haney, those seeds are still bearing fruit in this church today among those of you who are listening and in my own life. Those seeds she planted are still bearing fruit. It is a reminder that the seeds we plant, we don't always get to see what they produce. I, uh, one, it must have been Arbor Day or Earth Day when I was in elementary school. Uh, they gave all the kids a tree to take home to plant. And we planted mine. I don't know how many people actually did, but we planted the one they gave me. And it is in my parents' backyard, and it is a huge tree now. It is remarkable. It is not something that I did or that I even got to really see. I have not lived there for, uh, for a length of time for several years. But the tree keeps growing. And so do all the seeds we plant in this world. Sometimes you don't see where the fruit ends up. But this is the time of year, actually, when you do see the literal fruit of seeds you might have planted a few months ago. Uh, this is the time when I'm trying to find people to give away cucumbers to, or Aaron is. I'm just a helper in the garden, believe me. But suddenly, you're making pizza sauce. You're finding ways to use the, the, the fruit that you planted. This is a time of abundance. And it's remarkable, especially when you remember a few months ago, or for me it is, when Aaron was looking at this, the spot she had planted the seeds, looking for sprouts, wondering if a frost had killed them off or if they just hadn't germinated or the water had been off. <coughs> Excuse me. We had spent so much time wondering if those seeds will produce and now they are. The kingdom of heaven is like July in the garden. The little things you do long ago produce more fruit than you can imagine. Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven as, as he, he goes through these, these parables. He compares it to a man who buried a treasure in a field and then sells everything he has to buy it. To someone who does not know that that man has buried the treasure there, he just looks like a fool. And if you imagine for a second that you do not know how seeds work, imagine you just see someone who has a handful of mustard seeds throwing them onto the ground. It would look like they were throwing food away. If you did not know how seeds work, that is what planting would look like. But the calculus is obvious when you understand the growth. I could make a little bit of mustard today or a lot in a few years. Sometimes finding the kingdom of heaven feels like throwing something away. <laughs> but whatever we give away, I believe it comes back to us. I believe that our faithful service to the kingdom of God will be repaid to us, perhaps not financially, perhaps not in tangible ways we'd wish, but the gift of service is its own gift, and I believe it does come back in the fruit we produce in the world. Sometimes serving God's kingdom looks like we're being foolish and throwing what we have away. And so I have to ask, and I was thinking about this myself. If we could guarantee that there was a vibrant community of Wesleyan people worshiping God and serving the kingdom in Swepsonville in a hundred years, what would we give away today? If we could guarantee that the kingdom of God continued to thrive here, would we change the name of the church? Would we... Would we sell the building? Would we paint this space a different color? I'm not saying any of these things are what we must do. In fact, I don't think we should do any of those at the moment. But what would we hold on to so tightly 
that we wouldn't give it away if the kingdom of God could continue to be established here. What wouldn't we give away for people to know Jesus more deeply? A conversation I've had with almost everyone here probably and, and with my family members and other people who are watching is this question of how do we get more people in church? We need to get more people in church, right? And that's important. And we've been doing work with that aim in mind. Revitalization with the conference staff, breakfasts and events and discussions with all of you. But I hope we continue to remind ourselves that the goal is not that we have more people here. We do not do the things we do for ourselves, for what it might produce today or tomorrow or a year from now. The ultimate goal is to serve the kingdom of God, to truly be disciples, to worship God with our lives as well as on Sunday in church. And I believe that that produces fruit, that the real way to, to have more people enter into our church family is for it to be as faithful a community of disciples as it can be out in the world. If we're just thinking about ourselves, about our church, about our community continuing for its own sake, that's holding on to the mustard seeds. but we will achieve that goal more fully, more beautifully, and more true to the gospel when we give those seeds away, when we use what we have for the sake of God. Especially now, God's church in the United States, in the United Methodist Church, feels like a seed. It feels like we've lost a lot of the fruit. We've lost public worship in the way we were used to. We've, we've lost our small groups and our Bible studies and our Sunday schools. We've lost all these things. It feels like the church is a seed. And it should be noted that church attendance is as low as it's been in 50 years in the United States. Church feels like a seed, like a husk of what it once was, and especially when there's a pandemic. And it may feel that way in Swepsonville, that our numbers are a little smaller, that the numbers on the budget are a little smaller, that we are, are a seed of a formerly large fruit. And sometimes it might feel like the pandemic is the, a frost, <laughs> killing the seed under the soil. But I'm here to tell you today that I believe the seed's been planted. And I believe it's been germinated. I believe that this community has done a lot before I was here and since I have been here to offer ourselves, offer what we have to God for the sake of the kingdom. And so remember this today, even when it can feel like things aren't going so well. We're not a seed. We're that little sprout under the ground. It might not be obvious yet, but when you look, you can see it. <laughs> Friends, not every church would have so readily and so willingly completely changed a room in the building so that they could welcome guests better. We've done that. Not every church would let someone none of us knew cook in the fellowship hall. I took that as a given, and I think you all did too, that that was something we needed to do. That's amazing. Not every uh, community of faith was willing to do that or is willing to do that. And if we're looking for signs, <laughs> this might just be how my brain thinks, but... But friends, the last I heard, our apportionments to the larger church to serve the mission of the Methodist church are paid this year, in a pandemic year. That is an incredible testament to the generosity you have shown to supporting our mission 
and the mission of the whole church. There are good things happening here because we have given ourselves over to God's kingdom. And last but not least, I am amazed by the way the people of this church have supported one another, have continued to be the community, the loving community that we always have been. That's a sprout. I know that you all would, would give yourselves away for your brothers and sisters. Don't forget that. As the plant grows, we're going to have bigger problems, bigger challenges, more, more things to deal with, but never forget that generosity. Never forget what planting seeds can do. As the pandemic continues, keep looking for ways to be generous. Keep looking for ways to love one another. And even after, when we get back to, to something, we don't know what it'll look like yet, continue to practice generous hearts. Because the kingdom of God is going to produce with or without us. But it will produce here if we give what we have away for the sake of the kingdom. God bless you all. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you for the ways your kingdom is already being revealed in our lives with the abundance you have provided us. We ask that we may offer that abundance back to you, that it may produce tenfold, a hundredfold, a thousandfold for your kingdom. Lord, continue to form us into even more of a beloved community and even more of a kingdom-centered community. Remind us of all those who do not have our blessings. Lord, we pray for the sick, the hungry. We ask that we might meet them and serve them as you have and are. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace. Go and be generous to one another and for the kingdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.